She's going to get me in trouble one of these days. She's going to yell at me. I don't know when, though. But it's good to have everybody here. Uh, it's good to see you. Glad that you're here. If you're joining with us on Facebook, we're glad that you're here as well. Uh, we will get started with prayer. And let's take a deep breath. We're glad to be here. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you do. We're so thankful that we have this opportunity to be with you this morning or this evening. We're so thankful that we've gathered around to talk about you and to think about you. We're so happy that we have this time to sing praises to you and talk about how great you are. We're so thankful that we have our hope in heaven, that we have hope of not just this life and that things can get better in this life because of your blessings, because of your greatness, but also because in the next life there's hope. No more death, no more sickness, no more sadness. And we're just so excited that we can be with you forever one day. Dear Lord, we just ask that you just give us a spirit of excitement, a spirit of wonder at your word. Dear Lord, we just ask you to help us to be open-minded to what the word has to tell us. And dear Lord, may we be convicted of that word. May we think about what you have to say to us, and may we think about it, may it prick our hearts. May we come to you with humble hearts desiring a better life. Thank you for Jesus that he makes all of these things possible. And it's in his glorious name that we pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Our invitation song tonight will be Tell It to Jesus Alone. Tell It to Jesus Alone. Then our first song this evening will be It Is Well With My Soul. It Is Well With My Soul. We'll be singing the first and last verse of this song. When peace like a Sing to me of heaven. Sing to me of heaven. We'll sing the first and last verse of this song. Sing to me of heaven. This song will have our open prayer and then we'll have our lesson. 
Sing to me of heaven, sing that song of peace from the tolls that by me it will bring release. Earth will be lifted that our pressing so showers of great blessing for my heart will flow. Sing to me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and all the many blessings of it. Thank you for letting us come out tonight and worship you, dear Lord, and help us to learn and to glorify you. Just be with all the sick and those who are wounded and help them to get better, dear Lord. And most of all, thank you for your son, Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's what we've been talking about is things to think about. And last week we talked about truth and we talked about acknowledging the truth of, in reality of our own frailties and of our own sin and acknowledging those things. And today we want to talk about a word that seems to be kind of interesting. Uh, a lot of different translations have different things. Some might have something like uh, nobility, uh, to, be, to be noble, like the NIV. Uh, some other translations might have honorable. I believe that that is uh, whatever things are noble. Yeah, that's not uh, King James, New King James. Uh, the King James Version would have something along the lines of noble. What's interesting about the King James Version specifically is it translates this word in other places when talking about deacons as those who are grave. They're grave people. They are people who, when I think of the word grave, means serious, someone who is very thoughtful, someone that grave, you know. You kind of expect a man to be just real calm and just real patient and, and waiting for his move in almost everything. He's just real honorable. Uh, honor is probably, I would think, one of the better translations of this word. But then that leaves us to ask the question, to think about something honorable, what gives us honor? What provides us with that honor? That weightiness that when we walk into a room, everybody knows our name. When we walk into a room, everybody knows, I want to be friends with that guy or that gal. I want to have a relationship with them because I know the type of honor that they have in my group, in, in, this, in this place. In almost every church, there's someone who is honorable, whether it be male or female. There's always that one person that everybody knows and everybody says, you can trust him. 
You can rely on her. They're honorable. We might not even use the word honor anymore. We might not even talk about someone's honor, but we would definitely allude to different things about it. They're trustworthy. You can always rely on them. They're good. They're compassionate people. When we think about honor, though, some of the times we don't think of the right thing when we think of nobility or when we think of honor. We normally think of the person who has the most resources. That definitely would have been in the first century, right? The honor-shame society. Who do you want to be friends with? You want to be friends with the rich guy. Because the rich guy has reach in every single thing. You want the guy that knows everybody. You want to know that guy or that girl who has their hands in absolutely everything. If you need something done, I know exactly who you need to go talk to. We think of that as honor. We think of honor as being these physical things. Who can I rely on for their stuff to get me the things that I need? But honor doesn't really look like that. Because those things can go away, and people will no longer look at you because of that. But I think of this one particular woman, Anna Maria Reeves Jarvis. Anna Maria Reeves Jarvis, who was of Grafton, West Virginia. She organized a club of women nurses and, uh, to wound soldiers from the North and South during the Civil War. And after the war, Reeves Jarvis started Mother's Friendship Days to reconcile families that had been divided by the conflict. Throughout her life, Reeves Jarvis modeled the ideals of Victorian motherhood. She gave up her dreams of college to care for an older husband and four children. She bore the loss of seven other children with grace. She taught Sunday school in the local Methodist church for 20 years and stayed active in benevolent work. Her death in 1905 devastated her daughter, Anna. She honored her mother's memory by initiating a holiday honoring all mothers. Do we know what day this is? Mother's Day was first celebrated in 1908 in Grafton, where Anna grew up, and Philadelphia, where she lived as an adult. Later in a resolution, a resolution passed, May 8, 1914, the U.S. Congress officially established the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. Someone who goes through loss commendably is someone to honor. Someone who is a person of unity, desiring to unify all sorts of people together. Someone who may not have agreed with one side or the other but was willing to say that divided families are no good as a solution. Someone who cared for others and cared for them. These are things of honor. These are things that we should be thinking about. How can I bring honor not only to myself, but to the Lord? More importantly, to the Lord. How can I serve the people around me that they might not because they might see me for how great I am, but that they might see how much the Lord has done for me and in return how much I am willing to give to those around me. I think to think about the noble thing or the honorable thing is to think about the thing that will help and benefit those around me. Are we thinking about those things? Or are we thinking about ourselves? Have we been drowning in individualism and in selfishness and egotism for so long that we have failed to see the person's soul right in front of us? Have we failed to see the person right beside us as another human being who desires and needs love? Not just love in an intimate fashion, but a love that actually means something more. A love that looks like the Lord's, in which he sacrifices for others and sacrifices for the world. Are we so steep in individualism and self-absorption that we've forgotten each other? And if you've done that, then I believe that there is a sin involved with that. And tonight, the way to fix that sin is to give it all back to the Lord. That we need him to help us and we need him to guide us towards a better future and a better tomorrow. If you need anything, we're here. As together we stand as we sing. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone.